a boat scoop. I might be going out of I-20 to Monroe, I might be in California somewhere. So praise God. Amen? Amen. Turn with me, please, the psalm. I think this is going to go right along with what we've been doing this morning. Psalms 27 14. This will be the last of the series of messages out that's come through the psalms. This will be Psalm 27. This will be the sixth message. It says, the Word of God says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This psalm of David is a psalm of trust. We trust the one who not only allows us to walk with him, but he wants to walk with us more than we want to walk with him. And that's very important for us to understand. And verse 14 gives us the word of instruction. And it's very important, and a lot of people don't understand this, but it's very important to read God's Word. Let the Holy Spirit reveal it to them and then walk in it. Then walk in it. Walk with God before you have a need. Walk with God before you have a problem. Walk with God before your world seems like it's upside down. The first part, a word of instruction says, wait on the Lord. Of course, we know instruction is an act of teaching. That we need to be taught in many things. How to do things. We need to be taught on how to do things. How to get things done. The major point here is to get things done right so you don't have to redo them again. We don't want to redo things over and over and over. We need to learn and to learn quick. And allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what we need to know in order to be able to do what we're supposed to do. And that's in the secular world as well as the spiritual world as well. The difference in the secular world is they don't have Jesus. The spiritual world, world, we do have Jesus. And we need to walk with Jesus. We need to allow Jesus to be the Lord of our life. And it's very important to be the Lord of our life. Not to tell God what we're going to do, but rather to allow Him to lead us down the path that He wants us to go. And God gives us instructions how to do things the right way. And it's very important to be able to do things the right way. I don't know if this thing is on. Is it on? Okay. God gives us instructions how to do things the right way. I want to do things the right way. How many times have we made mistakes? And sometimes it seems like the same mistakes over and over and over. Well, I believe we need to get out the way and let God have His way. We need to pray and get out the way. And this is very important within the body of believers. I hear too many times people pray and then they want to tell God because they get in the way because they don't not only want God to follow them, but they want God to do what they want God to do instead of praying and getting out the way and let God take care of the situation. And that's a big amen. amen. We need to let God have His way. I don't know what's best. I think I do by reading the Scripture. I know if I go, if I go do something and it's not done properly, I'm going to have to redo it again. I'm going to get some super glue or something. I like, I like building furniture. Somebody says, I want, I want, I'll buy the material this person said, and I want you to build this. And I said, no, I don't do that. Because if I got a blueprint and I got to do it just like that, blueprint is taking all the fun out. Because if I cut a piece of wood that maybe a, a, a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, I get a kick out of trying to make it work. But if I got to do something for somebody else, they're going to want it done exactly the way they want it. Now it becomes work. Instead of being fun, it's no longer relaxation. It becomes a job. And I have a job, amen? I have a job doing what I'm doing. And, and, and but God is leading and God is getting it done. But God gives us instructions how to do things the right way. Uh, and this does away with, look, this does away with a lot of frustration, defeat, unworthiness. If you keep trying to do something and you just can't get it done right, pretty soon you're going to think of being unworthy. Instead of saying, God, you're God, you're in control, and whatever it is, God, I'm going to walk with you, so whatever takes place, you're leading me. We can't, you know, the Bible says out of a, out of a faucet, let's say out of a faucet, 
You can't get salt water one minute and the next minute get fresh water. Either it's going to be salt water or it's going to be fresh water. Either we're going to believe in the Word of God or we're not going to believe in the Word of God. The Bible says if we lukewarm, the Bible says in Revelation that God is going to spew you out. God is going to spit you out. It's almost like vomit. If I might say it that way, it's going to boom. So God don't want you lukewarm. God wants you warm. God would rather have you cold instead of lukewarm. Because if you lukewarm, you're going to leave a lot of people astray because you think you're so right and everybody else is so wrong and you're going to become the object of confusion. Come on, y'all listen to me this morning. We're talking about building a church that's going to be built on a solid rock. And that solid rock is the Word of God through the revelation of the Holy Ghost according to what God's Word says in order for us to build a church that God wants built. He don't want a lukewarm church and He don't want a, he, he don't want a lukewarm church. The, be honest with yourself. Whatever you are is what you are. Be honest with yourself because when you're honest with yourself, you're going to come to God and say, God, i got this many problems. I can't take care of it myself. I need you to take care of it. And by faith, if I get out the way, you're going to take care of it. But when you get in the fight, all you're going to do is get mixed up and hurt and bruised. Amen? Praise God. I'm preaching to myself now. I'm sounding good. It's not even in my notes. Amen? I'm getting excited. See what happens when you get in the presence of God? The Holy Spirit is the one that fills you. The Holy Spirit is the one that pours it out to those who wants to hear. Amen. But I, I don't need frustration. I don't need to feel. And I don't want to feel unworthy. And wait means to remain. Remember, wait. Wait on the Lord means to remain in readiness and expectation. What do you come to church for this point? I come to church because God told me somebody they're going to be people healed. And I believe people are being healed right now. Not just physically. People can be healed from hurt. Amen. How many here have been hurt for whatever reason or whatever, whatever? Well, I believe the Holy Ghost is healing with His anointing power. He's healing y'all right now. Y'all are breaking away from whatever had. Come on now. Do y'all believe that? I believe it. Amen. I believe it. To wait on the Lord is to demonstrate confident, confident expectations. I'm expecting great things. And, and, and you know, I, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting, the great things that I'm expecting is that people are going to turn their lives over to Jesus and there's going to be a change in their lives. And when there's a change in their lives, it affects, it affects not only them, but everyone they come in contact with. This is the power of the Word of God. Now, I don't believe the power. I'm not going to get into that, Lord. Okay, we're going to go on. Amen? So let's wait on the Lord and let Him lead us. And when you do that, when we wait on the Lord, we wait on the Lord because we believe, we trust in God. We trust in what God says that He will do. Now, doubt no longer comes in the picture at all. Doubt is no longer there. Doubt is like this. I hope so, but I don't know. I hope is founded on the Word of God and the hope when it was penned in that day meant guaranteed. That hope didn't say, well, maybe or maybe not. My hope is in Jesus Christ. My guarantee is in Jesus Christ. Amen. No, no doubts. The devil will come in and tell you this, but don't pay no mind to it. When the devil starts to come in, this is what I say, start quoting scripture. What scripture? John 1, 1 is a good one. And the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God. <clears throat> the devil don't like to hear that. The devil, you know what the devil likes? It's to see confusion. People arguing and fighting and carrying on. Pray that get out of the way. Go get some coffee. Somebody says, I don't drink coffee. Come to my office and you can have some coffee. Amen. We got coffee running just like fresh water. <laughs> if we run out, we turn that spigot on, we get some more coffee and put in there. I buy about two pound bags, amen. I want to make sure we're not we don't we're not losing anything. Hallelujah. But wait on the Lord. Which point when you do that, when you wait on the Lord and you're really truthfully waiting on the Lord, it brings good courage. Now you have courage to face whatever situation, condition, or circumstance that might be facing you. Wait on the Lord. And by waiting on the Lord, it brings good courage. 
By waiting on God, it builds our trust in God. How many miracles have we seen? I know people are going everywhere looking for miracles, but they don't have to go no further than the Father's house. How many miracles do you want? How many we can sit here all day and talk about miracles? We got miracles going on right now. You don't have to you don't have to run to Dallas, Texas for a miracle. You don't have to run to this seminar for a miracle. If you need to go to Dallas, go ahead. If you need to go to seminar, go ahead. But God is moving right where you're at if you are in God. Mm -hmm. God is right where you're at if you're in God. Now say amen. But by waiting on God, it builds our trust in Him. What if, what if, just think of it like this. Think of it like this. How many here believe in prayer? We all believe in prayer. That's why we're here. Amen. But what just what happened if we come up here, somebody like we pray immediately, God, and God answers immediately. He says, wait, and maybe it's later on. Sometimes He says no. But if, if every prayer we pray, God would answer immediately, People would start coming not because of their trust in Jesus Christ, but rather because of what they can get out of Jesus Christ. I don't want to get nothing out of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ prayed the full price on the cross of Calvary. When he said it's finished, it's finished. Now I have to put my trust and my faith, my trust and my belief in him. I'm not coming to Jesus to get everything. I'm coming to Jesus because he gave everything. Amen. Now that's the difference. Amen. Praise God. When we by, it builds our trust in God, which in turn gives us the courage to go forward in whatever situation we might find ourselves in. Now, if you've got courage, if you've got courage, whatever situation, condition, or circumstance you might be faced with, that courage is not based upon your ability, but that courage is based upon the ability of God. Come on now. Now, we're getting serious now. Let's have him cut through the middle man. Amen? Amen? Praise God. David knew from experience what it meant uh, to wait on the Lord. He, he had been anointed king by the prophet Samuel at the age of 16. But he didn't become king until he was 30. Now whether these years are exact, it doesn't make any difference. He was a kid when he was anointed. A young man when he was anointed. And he didn't become king until he was 30 years old. But one thing King David, uh, what David never did though, he never touched Saul. Because Saul was anointed king. Don't touch the anointing. Pray for him. But make sure they anoint him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But waiting on the Lord. Through all of this, David's courage was built on trust. Trust in what God said that he would do. Come on now. We're walking on trust right now, aren't we? How many here walking by faith on trust? If I had, if I had a hundred million, uh, if I had a hundred million dollars right now, my trust would be in what? We'd build a new church if we needed. We'd build a new church because we had the money. Because we had the money. Or we'd do this because we got the money. Oh, if all we had a hundred million dollars, you had a hundred million dollars, you'd have more problems than you have right now. Your trust is no longer in the one that's, that's true and real. Your trust is in something made by me. Now God did set up the money, money system. We got, amen? We got a monetary system. But my faith has got, see, see where God has got me right now, I have got to depend upon who? I, I, I've got to depend on Jesus. I had to, you know, I can't depend upon a 401. I can't depend on a retirement. I can't depend upon this. I have got to depend upon God. I have got to trust God. Now your miracles are coming. Now you want to see signs and wonders that people are running everywhere to see. When you don't have anything and God answers, what happens? Your faith is what? It's being built and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Pretty soon, doubt is nowhere around. Doubt is on the planet Jupiter. I think is Jupiter further than Mars. Uh -huh, it is. Well, we want to get that doubt as far away as we can. Amen. I would put it on Mars, but it's too close. We'll put it on Jupiter. Amen. Praise God. You see what I'm saying? If everything is handed to us, pretty soon the one that's doing the handed become the one we're looking to instead of the one who has created everything out of nothing, who is supplying our needs according to the way that we need them. 
Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good courage come from knowing that God is with you and holding you up. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 and 20. Okay, Isaiah 1. Boy, is it good this morning? Woo, Lord, Lord, Lord. There's a few more of them things, you know what? I'll be about to walk on that ship. I'm going to share that with you just a minute. Uh, what did I say? Isaiah, what? 1, 18 and 20? Y'all had it? Y'all had it? Amen. It says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. What does it say? Your sins are taken away. And if we're obedient to God, if we're obedient to His Word, it says what? Where, where am I at? 20. No, no, 19. You shall eat the good of the land. Let's go to 20. But if you refuse, come on, y'all got it? Yeah. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is good stuff, people. Now, this is not hard to follow. But you have to give up yourself. Do y'all know there's conditional surrender and then there's surrender? Conditional surrender is that you'll surrender, but you're going to do this, this, and this. God is not a conditional surrender God. When you come to God, it's complete surrender in order to receive the Word of God. The blessing of what God has. I say amen to that. Amen? But good courage from knowing that God is with you. And holding you up. That's some good verses right there to memorize and to, and to read. That's a promise straight from God. A promise with a condition. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord, which brings good courage, which in turn strengthens you. It strengthens us. I hear a lot of people worried about a lot of things, and maybe they need to be worried about a lot of things. I don't know. Only they can answer that. But I do know this. God will strengthen you right when you need to be strengthened. And you know, I really didn't realize this. Maybe I didn't realize this. But I was listening to a CD. And I always thought Samson was a pretty husky guy, you know. I mean, he had arms this big. And he had a chest popped out. He could lift up 5,000 pounds with no problem. But you know that's not true. Samson was not a big man. Because if he'd have been a big, come on now, come on now. If he would have been a big man, the people would look at him and God wouldn't have got the glory. His strength would have got him. From this tape, I don't know as I was listening that he was skinny dude. You know, I don't know. I know one thing. When I was 18, I was skinny. When I was 13, I was skinny. When I was born, I was skinny. Amen. Call me skinny girl. I don't know about now though. I went to the doctor and he saw he was talking to me. Well, he's a great guy. He looked at me and he patted my stomach. He needed to do that. <laughs> you know the sad part about it? He's right. But you know what the glory about the whole thing? I ain't gonna do it. Amen. I'm gonna still drink my coffee. And I'm gonna still eat two donuts at Symphony's on a Friday morning. Yeah. Isn't it good to be saved? To laugh and enjoy yourself. I'll see you, buddy. God. Think of it like this. God uses times of waiting in order to refresh us, to renew us and teach us. Isaiah 40, 31. Let's go to that real quick. I'm closing up here about two points. Isaiah, what did I say? Isaiah 40, 31. And y'all know what it is. It's one of the first verses I memorized way back when we first moved to Hammond, Louisiana. Melissa, I think, I don't know how old you were, but you weren't very old there. I can just about tell you, 75 to 8, you were about 70 years old when you first moved to Hammond. Boy, that's a long time ago. Blake, you wouldn't even born yet. All of you wouldn't either. Amen. But here it is, right? But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew 
their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Now, it didn't say, maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I think y'all will correct me. It doesn't say you've got to be 16 years old for this Bible verse to fit you. I believe you can be 71 years old for this Bible verse to fit you. I believe at whatever age that you might find yourself, if you claim this and you live according to the Word of God, that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna renew your strength and you're going to mount up with wings as eagles. You shall run and you shall not be weary and you shall walk and you shall not faint. Amen? Praise God. I'm so thankful that God blessed me. I'm 71, and I basically can do what I want to do, and the things that I thought I would like to do when I was young, I found out I don't want to do them no more. Amen? Praise God. But God uses, again, time to wait it in order to refresh, renew, and teach us. Each one of us right now needs to be strengthened. Whatever you, wherever you're at right now, you need to be strengthened. Whatever. Whatever. But this strengthening must come from God. I'm excited at what God is doing. I love to see dancing. I love to see the chauffeur blown. I love to see people praising the Lord. Amen? Because when that takes place, you're letting loose the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost wants to move. You remember this? I praise Him, God. Hallelujah. The angel came down and stirred the waters of Siloam. And when the first one stepped in, that person was healed. I see it when we're dancing and we're praising the Lord. The waters of the Holy Ghost is moving. And those who stepped in is going to be changed and transformed, healed, and delivered. And I believe that. I'm not trying to conjure up anything. I don't want to do that if it's not coming from God. I don't want it simply because I don't need it. I've been lied to enough. I've had enough problems. I don't need all that. I want the truth of God. And I believe when the angel stirred the waters, I believe whoever stepped in was healed. And I believe right now when we stir the waters of the Holy Ghost in our congregation, people are going to be healed. They're going to be delivered. They're going to be set free. They're going to mount up and wings. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you know why the devil wants us to beat this church. The devil don't care if we fill this church with people. The devil don't care if money comes in from everywhere. The devil don't care as long as we don't praise God and let the Holy Ghost move. The devil is happy. Amen. Amen. Woo! But I ain't happy. Because I want to be in the presence of a living God. Amen. 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 But this strength that must come from God. When one waits on the Lord, they are demonstrating their common expectations. Amen? Amen. Amen. I pray that this message has touched you this morning. I pray that this service has touched you this morning. By following God's instructions, we're now ready to enter into God's presence. Wait on the Lord, which brings good courage, which in turn strengthens you to be all that you can be. Don't try to be something you're not, but rather be all that you can be within your own will that's been given to you by God. Can I have an amen? Amen. God bless y'all.